This is E3720, week 6, lecture 1. So today what we're going to cover is root locus. Week 6, lecture 1. So we're going to start chapter 8. That's root locus. So what is a locus? So locus is mathematically defined as a set of points. Thus, root locus is the set of all closed loop poles as a function of a gain k. And for now, we'll assume that k is positive. We'll look at how to deal with negative k later. But for now, obviously, we're interested in the closed-loop poles of our system. So that's why we're looking at the closed-loop poles. And the point is the root locus is a very beautiful intuitive design technique that was um, systematically invented, if you will, by Evans in the mid-20th century, like around the 1930s, 1940s. Um, but it's called it's also called Evans root locus. But consider our unity feedback system. So here is our R. So here is our control, which is simply a gain K, which goes to a plant, G of S. That's our plant. And then we have a feedback gain as well, H. So T of S, let's look at the closed loop transfer function, it should be KG over 1 plus K times G times H. But this implies that poles of T of S must satisfy, this is obvious, 1 plus K, that is the roots of the denominator, H of S P equals 0. But simply rewriting this, this way allows us to impose some very powerful visual constraints on where the poles of the closed loop system should be. And this is called as the root locus criterion. This is the magnitude of K. Again, we are assuming that K is positive. So the phase angle becomes an odd multiple of 180 degrees or pi radians. So this is the root locus criterion. And the entire root locus design technique, believe it or not, is based on this simple criterion. Okay, But before we can utilize this criterion, we have to look at, or we need to understand, so we first, however, need to understand a vector representation of complex numbers. So let's look at a very simple example in the sense, consider the complex number z, whoops, z equals 3 plus j4. So on the complex plane, you can obviously represent this number as, let me try to be a to draw the scale here, 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is a j, 2j. I'm going to write the j here in the sense I'm not going to put the j on the imaginary axis. I'm going to write it here to emphasize that this is the imaginary axis. But anyway, uh, here is the point z. Okay, So this is our z. So obviously, we know that z, the complex vector representing z is right there, which this is the magnitude of z, and this is the phase angle of z. However, what's powerful about the vector representation of complex number is, suppose we have some, let's look at a very simple transfer function, there's only one zero, s plus two, and we want to evaluate f of z, it's obvious that this is simply three plus j four plus two, but it's not the point uh, so this is 5 plus j4. That's not the point of the 
vector representation. The point is you can graphically represent this solution this way, right? In the sense, uh, that is, let's say you have re f of z, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is j, 2j, 3j, 4j. In that case, here is your f of z. But the point is, this is equal. I, I, I'm not going to even say equivalent. It's the same vector because remember, a vector doesn't need a coordinate system. A vector is any quantity that has a magnitude and a direction, right? So what I can do is I can imagine this vector this way. That is without simplifying. That is, it is the vector 3 plus j4 from the 0 of f of s. That is, uh, the let's say this is negative 1, negative 2. So here is the 0 of f of s. 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is j, 2j, 3j, and 4j, but you can hopefully see that the vector 3 plus j4, which is this fellow, so I'm going to write this as magnitude of z and phase angle of z, okay? But the key each thing, the key difference between this vector and the okay, so the vector is the same. The key difference is the origin is different. Okay. And this allows us to basically encode F or F of Z. Sorry. So you can see that if you don't This is 5, okay? It's 5 units. And this is 4 units. So what is very powerful about this is we can extend this idea to any rational transfer function. Uh, so before I go, in other words... we can translate f of z to f of s0 equals negative 2 and the vector we get from the 0 of our given transfer function is z. But again, this should be very clear with an example. So let's look at now the skill assessment exercise Here's the example. This is skill assessment exercise 8.1 on page 391. So given f of s is s plus 2 times s plus 4 over s times s plus 3 times s plus 6, find f of s at z equals negative 7 plus j9 a analytically by simply plugging in and b graphically using vectors so the solution is the analytic solution is obvious that f of z is simply negative 7 plus j9 plus 2 times negative 7 plus j9 plus 4 over negative 7 plus j9. Now I'm going to explicitly write this as plus 0. And you'll see why when we utilize this expression to answer the next part. And did I just flip the brackets? I did. It was negative 7. There, and then negative 7 plus j9 plus 3 times negative 7 plus j9 
plus 6, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this lecture and then uh, evaluate this on my TI-89. Uh, so let me pause the lecture, evaluate it, you do the same, and I'll be right back. Okay, continuing. So I got this as approximately, let's see, 0 0.096 at an angle of negative 110.687 degrees. Okay, and if you look in your book, let me quickly do that. I think this is what they have. Oh, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's what they have. But let's look at B, which is more exciting. That is, looking at the graphical approach, what we're going to do is we're basically going to draw vectors from the poles and zeros of this transfer function to our point. So I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. That is, let me see if I can, since, well, I'm not, that is, I'm going to not draw it to scale, but let me see if I can at least make it a little believable. So let's say this is the imaginary axis, this is 9j, then negative 7 is somewhere over here. So then what do we got? We got a pole at negative 6, uh, 0 at negative 4, pole at negative 3, 0 at negative 2, not bad, and then a, uh, a pole at 0, okay? So here is our point. So now what we can do is we can look at vector. We can look at the vectors from the corresponding poles and zero. So here is one vector. Um, let me use a different color in this sense. Actually, that's a pole, yeah. Whatever, fine. Let's leave it at black. I'll use red for it from the zeros. So let's call this P3. No. Uh, yeah, P3 is good. Then this one. These are supposed to be straight lines. P1. Okay, I'm doing a horrible job of this. So what I'm going to do do is I'm basically going to look at, let me pause this, draw this properly, and then we'll continue. Okay, continuing, I've done, tried to do a little better job. So basically what we have is our f of z can now be represented in terms of complex uh, arithmetic, in the sense you can write this as the magnitude of uh, the, the product of the magnitude of the zeros divided by the product of the magnitude of the pole vector links, if you will, multiplied by the phase angle theta, where theta is the sum of the angles of the zeros minus the sum of the angles of the poles. So you have angle Z1 plus angle of Z2 minus the sum of the angles of pole 1, pole 2, plus pole 3. And if we evaluate this, we will get f of z is approximately the same thing, that is 0 0.096 at an angle of 118.69 degrees. Okay. Again, this is not, this doesn't illustrate the power of this method. So let's look at in what context does the vessel, so let me write that out in what context does the vector representation of complex numbers occur? Okay. So again, Let's reconsider the root locus criterion uh, which basically says that G, the closed loop poles
have to satisfy this relationship but this tells us that thus for k greater than 0 real axis actually any poles but particularly real axis poles that lie on the root locus must make an angle that is an odd multiple of pi but it's not where the power of this method is in the sense if it's if you're looking at the uh, real axis poles as a function of k we can easily figure out the angle that these poles make to the open loop poles and zeros of our uh, of the product of our transfer functions g and h so let's look at this right so let's look at an ex just start with an example and this will set us up nicely for the next couple of lectures so let's look at a simple uh, unity feedback system so here is our oops i forgot the k so let me put that in so here's our gain k here is g here is c let's consider a simple g of s which is s plus 2 over s plus 3 times s plus 4 times s plus 5 h of s is 1 so g times h is simply g so let's look at where are the poles and zeros of our g times h or g so we have one a zero at negative 2 pole at negative 3 pole at negative 4 pole at negative 5 but but this is it right one implies that sp plus 2 over so any pole must satisfy i'm just going to write negative 1 over k okay so but watch so let's say let's say for if we, we can easily check for some value of k does any point here is a pole of the transfer function or does it lie on the root locus that is it's a pole of the close to transfer function well let's see what is the angle that any point here makes to all these vectors it's zero right however because of the negative sign and k is positive the angle has to be an odd multiple of pi so there is no way there can be any closed loop poles to the right of these open loop zeros and poles okay so the root locus cannot lie here by the same notion we can see that any point here will make an angle of 180 degrees from negative 2 0 from all here so yes there can be a segment here let me use a different color okay same by the same notion uh, the any point here will make negative I will sorry, make 180 degrees let's use the positive doesn't matter we can go this way as well but uh, 180 degrees here 180 degrees here they cancel zeros over here it cannot lie here but here yes you can have a segment here you can't have a segment so we have actually found out where the real axis segments of the root locus lie okay very powerful just by using this angle criterion on the vector representation of complex numbers so next time what we will do is we'll make formal rules for sketching well, let me try to not use a new page so next time formal okay fine next time formal rules formal rules for sketching the root locus aha there next time formal rules for sketching root locus and again all of that is simply based off of this criterion okay see you next time